Cape Town is running out of water. After three years of unprecedented drought, it could be the first major city in the world to go dry. And nearly a dozen more around the world are facing the same risk. This is supposed to be Cape Town's main dam, but it's looking more like a desert. Did the city of Cape Town fail to act early enough? It's always easy in retrospect to say, well, we could have started earlier. If day zero arrives, the South African city of four million will shut off the taps for all but essential facilities, like hospitals. We're praying for a lot of rain. In a region defined by deep racial and economic disparity, the threat of dry taps is highlighting the stark divide between the haves and the have-nots. White people always go to water, but here by us, they're suffering from water. But in the end, everyone in Cape Town could be left without water. which is an affluent suburb at the slope of Table Mountain. Its natural spring has always provided water for local residents, but now thousands come from miles away as early as 5 a.m. to fill up their jugs. This is now a common sight in Cape Town. Long lines at one of the city's natural springs where people are collecting fresh water in an attempt to conserve the ever-scarce municipal water coming from the tap. It's a time-consuming but cost-effective alternative to buying water. Sometimes there's no money for water, so we must come here. How worried are you about day zero when the taps might run dry? It's, it's for me so worried because this is my foster care child and it's HIV positive and I can't even take water with this medicine. So I must um, buy water. The government must try to sort this stuff out, this uh, um, problem out because why people like us don't have a lot of money. Some enterprising Cape Tonians are turning crisis into opportunity with online offers to deliver water for those willing to pay. Others are selling rainwater collection tanks and installing water collection systems in homes. It's smart business since water, especially bottled, has been in high demand. When Day Zero appeared imminent, bottles would sell out in stores. Now, many Cape Tonians have settled into the realization that conservation is their new way of life. Well, the situation is very bad, but we're coping. We're getting used to this collecting water every third week. This is the new normal, we'll have to adjust to it. Scenes like this are not what most outsiders think of when they hear Cape Town. The coastal city is better known as a tourist destination with multi-million dollar beachfront properties. But three years of unprecedented drought and rapid population growth coupled with inadequate planning have plunged this paradise into panic. This is Cape Town's main reservoir supplying more than half of the city's water. I should be underwater right now, but as you can see, there is none in sight. The reservoir is down to just 10% of its capacity. The last 9% of the water is unusable because of the high mix of sand in it, making it almost mud. The winter rainfall runs from May to August, but rain alone is unlikely to save Cape Town. Instead, city officials are instructing residents to limit their daily water use per person to 50 liters, or 13 gallons a day. There are signs all around town reminding people to conserve, and some public spaces have already shut off their taps. So as you can see in this public restroom, there's signs saying that washing hands is prohibited. In fact, the fixtures on all the sinks are removed. And over here, there's a sign that says that due to the current water crisis, showers and some taps have been disconnected. In February, farmers opened their dams to allow about 2.6 million gallons of water to flow to the drought-stricken city. Such combined efforts have helped to push back day zero. But the doomsday remains a moving target in a city where a water crisis only highlights the deep disparity between residents. What's now considered the new normal for all Cape Tonians is everyday life for black residents living in townships. Under the apartheid system, blacks were forced to live in barren, under-resourced communities called townships like this one, where they continue to live today. Shepherd is among the 25% of Cape Tonians who live in townships, all of which combined use less than 5% of the city's water. They don't have taps in their homes or toilets or showers. So every time you need to get water, this is what you do? This is what I do, yes. What about when you want to wash yourself, shower? No, there's no showers. You must drink water and go to, and go to the home, put some water on the kettle, light the kettle, and you just throw it in the bath and you wash yourself. In. How many times a day do you do this? Or how many times a week? A week, I can say uh, maybe 20 times. 20 times a week? Yes. I asked Shepard to show me how he fills what he calls his bath. Maybe it took uh, half of uh, this, you see. You fill half this up? Yes. 
Then you take the asthma rags and the asthma soap. Uh-huh. Then you wash it. Yeah. When I'm finished, I wash throw the towels there and take the water, throw it there by the drain. Do you feel like now that everybody in Cape Town is suffering from a water shortage, that the richer people and the white people are getting a, a glimpse into your experience? It's not the same. Mm -hmm. Not the same here yeah, in South Africa. White people always go to water, but here yeah, by us, we are suffering from water. Townships already experience regular water shutoffs, and city officials say they'll be exempt from a citywide shutdown on day zero. The city's conservation campaigns are instead targeted at suburbs, which are among the most water wasteful. They're also where most white residents live. Anita Shapiro is doing her best to meet the city's water guidelines. Her family doesn't water their lawn or fill their pool and have learned to collect rainwater. Did you okay. know any of this before? No. You <laughs> No. <laughs> so you basically had to learn the we piping, to, the yes. <laughs> water infrastructure of this whole house. Yes. Anita's home has more conservation signage than most public facilities. She also uses wet wipes instead of washing her hands. If it's yellow, lets it mellow, takes short showers, and collects the gray water to flush the toilet with. Her neighbors have also drilled a borehole and let her draw groundwater from it. How do you feel about the fact that Cape Town has gotten to this point of severe water shortage? It's quite shocking, I think, to, to first contemplate the thought of there being no water in taps. I mean, we grew up with this magic that you open a tap and there's water and you suddenly have to realize it's not magic. There's politics behind it, there's, there's dams behind it, there, there's, there's engineering behind it. And, um, and people have failed us. The, the, the local government has failed, us, failed us, the national government has failed us. Officials are now scrambling to construct three expensive but temporary small-scale desalination plants that would purify seawater into drinkable water delivered through taps. A two-year plant seems kind of just like a band-aid and not a long-term solution. We don't know whether it's going to rain, we don't know what the conditions are going to be, so it buys us self time to just get additional water into the system. The second thing is it also provides us enough time to get, make sure that we get the long-term desalination and the permanent desalination plant up and running. So this is like buying time in a very expensive way? I won't say it's just buying time. I think we need to provide water and we need to get uh, self-sufficient. We need we, we want to get the sustainability back and we need to make sure that the Cape Town has got enough water to, to drink. But knowledge of the impending crisis goes back decades. So why is the city only now taking serious action? I asked the deputy mayor, who was recently put in charge of dealing with the water crisis. I went to the Thee Waters Kloof Dam yesterday. I saw how shockingly empty it is, but that didn't happen overnight. So did the city of Cape Town fail to act early enough? It's always easy in retrospect when you know that you had that situation to say, well, we could have started earlier. And obviously, if we had started earlier, we, uh, we would have been in a more comfortable position. But we would still have to be in a position where we had very significant water restrictions in order to, uh, to get through this uh, period of crisis. During my time here, the drought was declared a national emergency. There are skeptics who say that the Democratic Alliance, which runs the city of Cape Town, waited for things to get this bad in order for the national government run by the ANC to come and shoulder the burden. What do you say to that? Well, I mean, that's pathetic, to be honest. Um, you know, this crisis uh, came upon us uh, through the lack of rainfall, and everyone has acknowledged for the last three years that, uh, that there is in, inadequate rainfall. The national government, in terms of the South African constitution, is responsible for bulk water supply. So it has been their responsibility to step up to the plate. In the meantime, the city is taking additional steps, including lowering the pressure in its water system, installing larger desalination plants, tapping into aquifers and mountains for groundwater, and turning wastewater to drinking water. So we went from three million people to four million people overnight. And so the ability of the city to, to service people is stretched because you have this massive growth in population, but there's a lag in the economic growth. What's happening here in Cape Town can't be dismissed as unique. Only 3% of the water covering the Earth's surface is fresh water. And already more than a billion people around the world live in water-scarce regions. 
The UN has projected that the global demand for fresh water will exceed the supply by 40% in 2030. And that's due to population growth, climate change and human action. Meanwhile, in Cape Town, as the city struggles to push back day zero, its citizens are forced to change their relationship to water and how they use it, possibly forever. Hey guys, it's Dina here at Cape Town's main reservoir. That's what's going on with the water crisis here. Watch our next video where you see what it means to live on 50 liters of water a day. Be sure to like, comment, and share this video. Subscribe to AJ Plus and check out more of my reporting direct from.